Hello, my name is Annabelle McGilvray and I'm the Director of Communications with the Australian Institute of International Affairs. I'm joined today by Timothy Marbun, news anchor with Compass TV. Thank you very much for joining me, Timothy. Thank you. It's glad to be here. So you're in Sydney to take part in the fourth in Indonesia-Australia yeah. dialogue and as part of that um, we've been discussing a little about the Australia-Indonesia relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to talk with you about what's happening in Indonesia at the moment. Mm -hmm. In the lead up we have 12 months out from the next election. Well, yeah, presidential election. So can you perhaps paint a picture of what's occurring, what the movements are in the lead up to that? Okay, so well, what, what we know for sure for now is Jokowi is uh, going to go for the election. Uh, he's the incumbent, and but we don't know who's running with him. Uh, the big thing that you, you probably want to watch is who's going to go against him, because everybody's saying that Prabowo, his opponent in 2014, is going to take another try in 2019, which is probably the, the best, well, the, the biggest person next to Jokowi who could have a chance in winning the presidency. But then again, in the polls, in the surveys, he's very far left behind. So what's interesting now is what to see what his party, Prabowo's party, the opposition party, the biggest opposition party, is going to do. Are they going to sacrifice uh, 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 Prabowo or are they going to sacrifice the party? Well, I, I can't really say sacrifice because they have to calculate what, what are the real chances of Prabowo actually winning the elections, mm -hmm. uh, considering what the survey is showing. And if he doesn't you know, uh, go on and try to become the president for 2019, what are the repercussions for the party and who are they going to you know, uh, bring, bring forth if it wasn't Prabowo? So uh, it's still okay now as we, as, as we, uh, uh, we're going to have the, the regional elections in 2018. Mm -hmm. So after that, then the real, uh, quote, uh, uh, battle begins between who's running for a presidency. So we really don't know. Everything's changing day by day, decisions from parties. Even the opposition party is talking with the ruling party. And people are thinking, is Prabowo going to run with Jokowi? Then who, who will they be uh, heading against? So it's really uncertain for now, I have to say. And is this, um, in historical terms, uncertain? Mm -hmm. I mean, are you do? I mean, is obviously all, all elections have you know this yeah. rough and tumble in the lead up yeah. to it. But um, in historical terms, is this a particularly? I mean, given that Indonesia is a young democracy, yeah. how 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 is the standing at this point? Uh, well, I'll have to say it's really different, actually. Now, um, I'm guessing. Well, a lot of people are guessing that we won't see anything until August, because August is, is when when they have to register their names, and then we'll know who's running for president. Now. Everybody's guessing now. Uh, I've talked to a lot of politicians and also people who, 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 who are uh, political commentators that what they're aiming for now is a wow factor. Mm -hmm. So the last day of registrations, they're pretty sure everybody would register at the last day just to get the wow factor. I didn't think that he would actually do it or mm -hmm. I, his, name, his name never came up and suddenly he's registering to be president. So this doesn't usually uh, happen. We've, what we've seen in... Obama uh, Yudoyono, he, he was, well, a lot of people already predicted that he could run his, for his second term. Uh, but uh, we probably be seeing, we, we've seen a lot of um, surprises in uh, 1999 and, and the elections after that. Mm -hmm. But then again, it, it was the same people, it's either mm -hmm. Sbeye or Megawati or now uh, Prabowo. So it's, I'll have to say, we, for now, we, could, we would guess that it will be something predictable, yeah, Jokowi against Prabowo, but coming to August, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a surprise later on. So could that wow factor, I mean, from Australia's, uh, obviously what's covered, what comes to the fore in Australian media often mm -hmm. is the nationalism, perhaps the potential mm -hmm. rise mm -hmm. of nationalism. Yep. Could that play a role in the wow factor? You know, could there be a candidate um, that, that is pushing that even more so? Uh, well, yeah, we, we are seeing... Uh, some some possible candidates like Gato Dermantio, mm -hmm. uh, he was the head of the army. Uh, but then again, in Indonesia, you have to be with a party to run for presidency. And uh, Gato has no party. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we'll have to wait for Gerindra. If they would say, Prabowo, you step down and we'll bring up Gato, which, is, which will be Prabowo's decision, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is probably the last chance Prabowo would ever have if he was to run for presidency. 2024, he'd probably be, you know, I'm, I'm enough, you know, this is, I'm, I'm too tired, you know, mm -hmm. this is too much for me uh, to run for presidency. So 
uh, we're waiting for that decision. But yes, there are names like Gato Normantio, there are other names, even names who are like scholars but have a very good reputation, like mm-hmm. um, Mahfud Imde, who, 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 who is a cleric uh, and a scholar, who said, who uh, said that, you know what, if Jokowi wants me, then I'm ready. And then there are party leaders like Muhammad Iskandar and uh, other party leaders who say that I'm sure that Jokowi would choose me to run with him. Mm-hmm. So we are seeing those names, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that it's not limited to those names per se. So we'll be hearing more and more names coming up to August. Now, t- changing subject a little bit, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of talk at the dialogue about the um, the close, the need for um, ongoing mm. relationship between Indonesia and Australia, the need for um, greater trust, perhaps, yeah. in some aspects of that relationship. Yeah. Um, is there, um, what can you see within Indonesia, the attitude towards Australia, perhaps in the coverage of the media, the discussion, public discussion? Um, you know, where, where are there areas, perhaps, that could be improved that Australia mm-hmm. might be able to, you know, take steps um, to improve things? Well, um, my simple sense would say that it's not enough. Uh, coverage about Australia and probably the other way around. I'm not, I'm not really sure about how much mm-hmm. Australia is covering about Indonesia, but uh, when it comes to Indonesia covering about Australia, uh, we need more, I have to say. I mean, coming from the media, you should say that, why aren't you doing it? Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're doing is more to uh, uh, ceremonials when our president comes here, when it, uh, our ministers come here. Uh, we do report that to our country. Uh, and of course, when incidents happen, you know mm-hmm. we, we see what, what happened in Papua. We mm-hmm. see incidents uh, to to uh, other incidents in uh, in our bilateral relationships, which is of course negative news, mm-hmm. <coughs> which would you know frame a picture for the Indonesian mind of how they would assume uh, presume Australia. Uh, so, uh, as I said, not enough. There's no personal touch about the Australian people and the Indonesian people. So we're not, you know, we're not reporting on how people are living their lives in Australia. Uh, What's unique about Australia in the sense of uh, it's unique, but you know what? It's also related, yeah, like humanity-wise with Indonesia. We have that as well in Indonesia. We have these humanity problems in Indonesia. We have that in Australia. And that could, uh, you know, ignite talks about, okay, we apparently we have the same problems. How do we solve that people to people? So I think that is missing in the Indonesian media and probably in the Australian media, how we talk about people, uh, how we talk about incredible stories uh, within the Australian people or the Indonesian people who just show Australians and Indonesians that, you know, above all, we're just humans and we face a lot of problems together. So thank you very much, Timothy. Thank you. Thank um, you. That was a pleasure. And if you'd like any more information about um, about international affairs um, and events, um, please go to the website at www.internationalaffairs.org.au or follow us on Facebook.